This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. And welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program here in America that you, the viewer, can express your opinion and tell your stories on the child welfare system. I am Dennis Lawrence, and beside me is Maria Malin. You know, we recently attended a rally in Lansing, Michigan, uh, put on by a couple young ladies, uh, Dina Carl, Carl and um, Alexandria Cervantes. And we're going to go to some of that footage today. And I want to thank those two women for doing such a great job at that. Let's get back to the rally. Today we're going to show you the interview with Sherry Ruiz. Her grandchildren were taken by the state. Hi, my name is Cherie, and this is my daughter, Lisette, and we've been in the system since October 2nd, when the day they took my two grandkids away from me. Um, on this side is my grandson, Crescencio, we call him Melon, and on the other side is baby Jordan, and we call her Sissy. This little boy right here, when he left our home, he was the best little angel in the world. We didn't have too much time with Jordan yet. He's so loving. He's in the um, Head Start, and he, he loves his sister so much, he took his sister to school for show and tell. Three months ago, we went to court in front of um, a referee, and at the time, the foster parents said, oh, they're doing so good. And, and recently, we just went back to court, and all of a sudden, the foster parent stands up and has these horrible stories about my grandson, and it was such an angel. And I'm not saying this just because he's my grandson. He's been brought up with love and respect. All of a sudden, now he breaks windows, supposedly. He's harming his sister and the dogs. and the, They can't control him. First of all, he sh they shouldn't be foster parents if they can't control a four-year-old. What if they would have been placed with a baby that had a drug addiction or was really abused at home and had autism or some kind of mental retardation? In that situation, a grown man stands up and says this about my grandson. My hands are shaking right now because... There's no way, and what it is, is that these people want to adopt. And all in the, from the beginning, there's been reunification. My daughter has gone above and beyond everything on her own. I stand by her side. I got put on a central registry list because they didn't want the kids to come with me. They told me pretty much, don't fight for your kids. I got a lawyer. I got my name removed. They still said I couldn't have my grandkids. My home was okay. It was all approved. They went through every little step. They waited till the last day before we went to court and told me that I cannot have my grandkids until my daughter is okay. And all this stems from postpartum depression. My daughter asked for help while she was pregnant. She asked for help for four or five, four months after she was pregnant. Sparrow Hospital even sent over to Sparrow Professional Building to her doctor's office saying this is an emergency and, my, and that my daughter needed to be seen and given medic medication for postpartum depression. They canceled once again out of six times. So my kids, my grandkids are in a foster home. My daughter gets to see them. It was three times a week, one day, one hour a day. Now it's went up to five hours because she can't have a home yet because she doesn't bring enough food, as they say, to feed them. But like I said, my grandson, Crescencio, over here, he is going through the worst thing ever. Jordan was only four months, so she doesn't know. They have my grandkids calling them mom and dad. Crescencio is so confused. Um, he can't, there, there's no way you're ever going to break that bond between us and our grandson and my daughter. He has that bond and that's what's wrong with her. Her name is Amy. 
the foster father is named John. And to me, I think it's all about money. There's nothing wrong with my home. There's nothing wrong with my daughter's home. Right. My daughter's been through hell and back, and I'm sorry to use that word. Yeah. And she's still going through it. And she's not going to stop fighting for her kids. They can take as long as they want, but my grandson knows we're there. And just recently, a foster mom took his toy away. Like, really? You can take a toy away from a little four-year-old just to hurt his feelings more? She... I feel like when, when there's reunification involved in the surf, uh, situation, kids should not be placed in a home with the foster parents that are expecting to adopt a kid. Right. They can't have their own kids. Exactly. And you don't set up and, if you're a foster parent, you treat somebody with respect and dignity. Yeah. Don't treat my grandson and hurt him okay. to make him act out in the wrong way that he shouldn't be acting because he's never had that problem at home. I don't even have to discipline. I don't, I don't have to yell at him. He knows what's wrong and right. He's a very loving child. And like I said, this is all about adoption and money and what they can get out of them. And she's not gonna take my grandkids away. But here's my daughter. Okay. Well, she can't talk, she's sad. <laughs> but I, we lost our grandma, my mom, in July. My daughter had her baby in May. And that's the only blue-eyed little baby we have in our whole family. The rest of us are dark haired, brown eyes. She looks just like my mom. So that's our little baby Juju there. And my daughter, like I said, she's, and I'm not just saying this because it's my daughter, but she made some of the best kids ever. And we're gonna stand up and fight for them forever, yeah. no matter what we have to do. So like I said, there needs to be more help with these parents being able to get their kids back home when there's reunification. Never once have they re reached out to my daughter and asked if she need help with counseling. They don't ask if she needs help with anything. They don't ask if she needs help and do anything. All they do is try to put her down in every little situation there is. This, like I said, I, I, really you're complaining about what she brings for lunch. And then when she'll bring lunch, the mother already, the foster mother will already have fed them. And she can't even ask them questions like, why are you acting out? Why are you doing this? Because it's, it's just like you can't even talk to your kids. You can't say anything. But all I'm saying is that there are fam families out here that do deserve to have their kids taken away and it needs to be investigated, but investigate and do your job. Don't just take them away just because you assume something bad is going on. Invest our, in our situation, they never even checked on other family members that we asked them to. They just took them away. So it's been going on since eight, October 2nd. What is today? So we're, I don't know, we go back to course September 19th and we're hoping for them to come home. But like I said, the foster parents stood up in court and said my little Crescencio over here is not welcome in his home anymore. Do you guys think that that should be a foster parent? I think they need to look in the background of these foster parents that they're giving. We also had a family member that's been a friend of the family for 17 years, went through all the whole foster system, became a foster parent, and they will not let her adopt these kids, or let her foster my grandkids, but she can adopt, foster other kids in the system <laughs> through Lutheran Children's Services, but she can't foster ours and it makes no sense. Everything that we do that they tell us to do, when it's when it's done and over with, they come with something else new. So we're getting closer, hopefully, and they will be back home with us. And I just wanna say that I'm so proud of you, Lisey, for everything that you've done. And you over there, Miss Lady, I wanna tell you I'm proud of you for standing up for up here. Okay? Bye. I personally know what it's like to have grandchildren uh, ripped out of a grandparent's loving arms. The Michigan legislators need to focus on some grandparents' rights in giving grandparents a stepping stone so they can get involved in DHS court proceedings and be a voice for their grandchildren. Next, we will be going to Baby LK. Baby LK will be talking about Medicaid fraud as well as um, fraud in the state-run child welfare programs. Here's Baby LK's Stop Child Abuse Special. Good evening. Each year, hundreds of billions of dollars in healthcare fraud are being built to Medicaid and other social security programs and child welfare, and nothing is being done to stop this form of child abuse. 
So why is healthcare fraud and child welfare considered child abuse, you ask? Innocent parents are being charged with child abuse and the children are being placed in state-run child welfare healthcare programs. All because the parents are poor, raising kids by themselves, can't afford medical insurance, the kids could be disabled and could have special needs or pre-existing conditions, as this is the only way to access medical care and help. That's child abuse. Having no health insurance is legally considered child abuse and the numbers are falsely reported nationally. But what's even worse is that there is no health care fraud enforcement in child welfare health care programs. That's child abuse. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Office of Inspector General has teamed up with the U.S. Department of Justice Attorney General to combat the billions of dollars in health care fraud, but have neglected our children because they remain silent to the Medicaid fraud schemes in child welfare, not even recovering one single penny. The state's Medicaid fraud control units, run by the state's Attorney General, do not do a thing to stop health care fraud and child welfare because the state's Attorney General are the ones prosecuting these poor families for child abuse, all because they have no health insurance, all the while defending the practices of these state contracted agencies for filing false claims to the federal health care program such as Medicaid. That's child abuse. Child abuse organizations can increasingly build child welfare health care programs such as foster care in the state's children's health insurance program at higher rates of funding by pumping kids up with high levels of psychotropic drugs that they never needed in the first place. That's child abuse. Sometimes they bill for kitty kickbacks, kitty dumping in residential institutions for no reason, phantom services, and parents have no opportunity to blow the whistle on them to protect their own children. That's child abuse. Even though the big pharmaceutical corporations have entered into billions of dollars of settlement agreements with the Department of Justice for illegally and wrongfully marketing psychotropic drugs to kids in child welfare health care programs, nothing has been done to stop them. Until now, U.S. Representative John Conyers Jr. has taken up the fight to end child abuse by introducing the bill H.R. 676, the National Health Care Act, to guarantee that all children have medical coverage and to stop child welfare fraud in health care. We're going back to Lansing as we hear from one of our Michigan's leading advocates, a grandmother that will not give up her fight, Debbie Williams. I'm a grandmother and um, I would like to talk two parts. And one is that um, I'm a grandmother, I don't have a police record, um, I don't have any protective service concerns, I have a nice apartment, and Washtenaw County Child Protective Services has denied me and my grandchildren with false allegations, and I have every bit of um, evidence of it. And um, they continually do it, and you're not going to get any justice. The second part is we're not going to get any justice from Steve Yeager. I even been in a meeting right here in that building right there with one of the legislators. And he told me that um, he wasn't going to accept my evidence. And my little grandson later on, a couple of years later, he wind up Malik Tyler Tucker getting adopted out. You know, so we, I, I just want to say, I'm just, I am going to, no matter what, I'm going to make sure that the absolute and qualified immunity that, um, I'm nervous and it hurts, but the immunity that they enjoy, we all got to come together and make sure we get it on a petition so it can be on the ballot, so we can be able to have people around the, um, our counties to vote on it because this is why they um, abuse us. They have absolute and qualified immunity. 
it's nothing you can do really to um, sue them or to, you know, I don't even know if you can even get your kids back once you, um, once they take them that long and they, they've been in the system like two and three, four years. I don't even know. But um, if we can fight and make sure that we can get this immunity either modified or get rid of it and then they can pay for their own insurance, then that's, that'll be fine. But CPS is totally corrupt, totally. And when you try to talk to people about what's going on, they think you disgruntled. They think we make enough stuff. And, and also people think that, well, you must have did something. It must be something that the grandmother done. It must be something that the parents done. These people work under the color of law. They make wrong look right. And they have the backings of a lot of the referees. They have the backings of a lot of the judges, uh, the prosecutor. <laughs> I, I can show you so much evidence that you, you try to contact them. I have, myself, have spent over, hmm, I'll say, about $500 sending certified mail to them. Sending certified mail and they don't answer to it. And I know this happened to a lot of you guys out here where they just don't answer to your calls, they don't answer to your certified mail, they don't care. Our kids is no more than products to be sold. And you know, the people they target the most is people who don't have any money. People who also, they think they don't have any family members, nobody to back them up. But we have each other, you guys. We gotta stick together, no matter what. I am not afraid of CPS and their criminal ways. I am not afraid of you, CPS, and your criminal ways. I want you to know it. You will, the Bible state that, and I believe it's somewhere in Proverbs or um, Psalms, when you dig a ditch for somebody else, you will fall into it. It always happens. You guys got each other back. Keep on having each other back because you're going to have each other's back right in prison. Thank you. Uh, camera on Dennis. Thank you, Debbie, for the good work you're doing and keep it up, please. Uh, Maria, you know, 2015 is here and I like to take up a little time with the rest of this program to discuss some of our goals and dreams for this year. Well, you know, I think some of our, uh, my personal goal this year is, uh, you know, we need to get some grandparents bills in the state of Michigan. Um, I like what South Carolina has done. They have uh, made a bill where a grandparent can petition the court in a DHS case. Uh, right now, there, there's very little vehicle to uh, get a footing and get a voice for your grandchildren in the court system, and that's one thing I like to, uh, you know, see worked on. Um, we got the abuse and neglect registry. Uh, they, they fixed that a little bit, uh, where you can get off from it within. 10 years if it's not a class one or two, class two offense, but I like to see where you actually have to be convicted in either criminal or family court. You know, that'll make the stakes a little bit higher because, uh, you know, an uh, attorney would have to fight for a parent, otherwise they would go on that registry. But the way it is right now, a CPS worker can put you on that registry by a preponderance of evidence, and we certainly don't need social workers making those type of decisions. Uh, this can really mess up, you know, if you want to do anything to school with your grandchildren or uh, uh, coach a little league team. You know, these have to be something that is done in a court of law and put on there by a judge. Um, we're looking at a 2015 road trip. Uh, uh, we, we like to do another Lansing thing that we did last year. That turned out great. We had a lot of people out there and speaking. Um, the Govan Booth pro, uh, protest, that comes up in September too, and I think some people are getting involved across Michigan on that. So those are a few goals, personal goals of mine. You have any, Maria? 
Well, I know one of the things that is um, being pushed by all mothers that have been in the situation where abuse is about involved sometimes, you know, even the grandparents or anybody else that's involved in a child's life, in order to take a child away from a parent completely, we're requesting that they have jury trials. Um, any judge can say, you know, as we've seen too, all too often, is that your kids don't like you and they can take your children out of your life completely. Um, in many of these cases, the parent has asked for, you know, counseling or something to improve the relationship with the child, but with you know, being kept from that child and they're in survival mode. They're trying to really do what they can to please the abusive parent. So that's one thing that we're really pushing hard for is jury trials when you're attempting to take a child away from a parent or grandparent forever. That needs to be proven and, as you said, convicted before that should even be possible to take place. It's not, it wasn't in the documents that our founding fathers had created to give us our rights as parents that you know the government should be able to step in and take all your rights away from you as as a parent or grandparent that was you know these are being used and abused by people that are really harming children in that manner right um now, now, another problem I've seen in some of your um, cases is that uh, it is hard for a person at times, a, a judge can deny certain evidence in court. Uh, is there any, any thought on that? You know, where, where can we go on that, especially uh, when it considers domestic violence and, um, or abuse to the children? Um, you know, I've, I've seen that in several cases. Yes. Well, and as we've seen with um, Judge Kevin Cronin's video, he stood right here in the studio and said that they can t take a child away with just a preponderance of the evidence, just as social workers can do through child services. And, you know, part of this is that you're handing, we're handing over way too much power to these people that are, that they do not have a personal investment as to what happens to these children they say what they think and they leave the bench or their office and go home and I'm not sure do they sleep at night after they do these things I don't know but I do know that this should not ever be you know there should not be given that much power to one person to determine children's lives especially when we as humans have um, our own belief system well I certainly know that you know we're seeing more and more uh, media coverage, I think, on this subject. Uh, it's, it's unreal what runs across my desk every day. Uh, you know, regular stations running um, information on what's going on. And so, you know, our voice, our voices are, are, are the big key. We've got to be out there advocating for change. Right. If nobody advocates, it's, it's not going to get done. And um, I, I think in the last five years since I've started, I've seen growth in this, a growth. Yes. You know, it's more than getting on Facebook and complaining. It's getting together and really voicing what's going on and letting people know. So I, I look forward to 2015 being a better year than the previous years. And um, you know, hopefully we can get this change enacted and as Dennis stated, it takes all of us to implement change in these areas. We can't do it without you. Um, you know, we're here to tell your stories. We're here to show, you know, for right now, Michigan, uh, we're looking at going national, but we're trying to tell your stories and allow people that are not directly affected to become as outraged as those who are affected. I, I tell people a lot, a lot that you believe this doesn't involve you, but when my child, who's only lived in abuse, grows up and marries your child, it will directly affect you then. Um, sometimes it's hard to see the full effect when you're not involved, but really it's common. You know, these kids are, 58,000 children 
a year are placed in the homes of convicted abusers. This is, these are not small numbers, you guys. This is really, it's bad now, but the next generation, it, I don't even want to think about that, Dennis. I mean, that just exactly really hard to exactly. think about. The next generation, um, you know, we're, we're pulling these children away from families and, you, you know, you look at the mess that we have, I, I shudder to think we have to make changes. And what, what we'd like to do too is to ask you, please, you know, come and join us, volunteer for an hour a week, an hour a month, whatever you're able to do. Um, we understand that some of you are professionals and have jobs, but we do need the assistance and this is the only way we're going to be able to bring about change for all of our children, Dennis. Right. We're not asking for money, we're asking for your time. One hour a week, two hours a week, three hours a week can make a big difference. Uh, we film every third Monday and if you have three, four hours available, that's great. That be four hours a month. Consider it like a bowling night. And it's fun to do. It we is. have a good time yes. down here. <laughs> so so um, we'll be back after this message. Parental rights. Freedom to raise up your sons and your daughters according to your conscience and convictions. In America, this has always been a privilege. But would you believe there are those who wish it were otherwise? This traditional parent-child relationship is currently under shadow of political threat. Help preserve parental rights support the constitutional amendment. I want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your voice can make the difference.